What's up guys this is Ronnie welcome back to our channel total technology zone this is tutorial 67 and today's topic will be very interesting in this tutorial I'll show you how to develop one rag based help desk engineer using GPT-4 Omni model and LangChain framework okay so in the last tutorial I actually showed you guys how to work as a or sorry how to develop a, a L1 support engineer who can log a ticket on behalf of a actual physical or person uh, specific engineer can be replaced by a ai engineer so that we already um, uh, actually saw in the last tutorial like where user came with some specific problem and the problem can be logged as a gyra ticket into a um, ticketing system and in this tutorial we'll be going to solve a real world problem with the help of rag means um, we'll be going to develop a rag with some sort of like uh, help desk manual and then we'll be going to uh, develop an UI using Streamlit. In the UI, user will ask some question, and uh, like with the help of general RAG workflow, the answer will be first um, uh, like uh, searched against the entire RAG. We'll get the relevant document, and again with the relevant document and with the user question, the LLM is actually going to refine the more uh, contextual result, right? So that is what we'll be going to do. So what exactly we're gonna do here? Load service manual into a vector DB, streamlit UI to ask end user to enter his problem and build rack to answer user question. So these are the very basic workflow of this tutorial. And obviously I'll be going to share the code in this link. So if you don't want to watch the video, we can directly go ahead and get the source code from there but please don't do it uh, if you don't do if you don't watch my videos i won't get the viewership and google is not going to promote my video so it's a humble request if you're watching my video or if you're uh, watching this channel for the first time please try to subscribe to my channel and if you are already an existing viewer but haven't subscribed please do it and try to hit the uh, bell icon and also try to share our videos with your family and friends so that we can get the highest number of viewership okay so now come back to the business so we'll write the code here or maybe we'll start working on the code so basically um, i will be not going to write the code in this tutorial because most of you said that uh, writing the code is actually uh, sometimes going to be very boring if you're doing the same thing again and again so what i did here first i'm explaining you so basically um, uh, i imported this libraries here okay and i think i don't require this thing so basically here i imported this pi pdf loader then recursive character splitter then chroma is a database vector database which is uh, comes uh, as an inbuilt vector db within the langchain framework and we obviously going to use the open AI embeddings right so first thing first first i'll just create a loader variable and inside the loader i'll be just going to load this manual so basically if you see this is our manual so this is basically a manual for a specific printer okay so if i go here i download it in the internet so basically it's a user guide for this ipson printer okay so what i did i actually load this file here and after that i'm using this loader.load utility to load into this docs variable and i print this variable yes i don't require this in actual scenario but i'll, I'll show you guys and then I'm actually creating a text character or uh, recursive character text splitter. There I'm actually splitting based on the 100 character and the chunk over lab is 50. And then we are actually splitting the document and saving it inside this chunk documents. And after that, we are setting up a vector DB with this vector DB. And we are using this persistence directory parameter so that my DB will be stored inside this local directory with the name of chroma underscore DB as a collection. Okay. So what I'll do now? Let's try to actually start working on this thing. Okay, so let's execute. So once you execute, you will see something is created here. Okay, so it's giving me this thing and everything is available here. If you go here, you see it's available inside this SQLite thing. Okay, so vector database is actually ready right now next thing what we will do we will be going to create this test.py okay so i will just rename it from test to rag okay it will be rag.py okay so what is happening in the rag 
let's open this thing so basically if you see i'm again importing this chroma then open ai a chat open ai and open ai embeddings okay obviously chat open ai will be our llm and open ai embeddings will be going to be used for embeddings to load the vector database i'll be going to use llm chain um, from llm uh, sorry from chains module and then i'll be going to use prompt template and obviously i require streamlit okay so first thing first we'll be going to set up a streamlit app title and we'll be going to give some naming convention it's very simple and then we'll be going to setting up a vector database okay so here we are not setting up the vector database we are actually loading the existing vector database from here so i just said persistent directory is actually this one embedding is open a embedding so basically our vector database will be loaded inside this variable then i just keep this prompt template as blank so i have already created the template here where is the prompt yes so you are an intelligent help desk agent specializing in printers answer user queries related to printer based on based strictly on the provided context do not make assumptions or provide information not include in the context if no information found in the context just reply sorry answer not known okay so let's copy this thing okay and we'll be going to paste it here right okay then we'll be going to setting up our LLM chat open AI model is GPT-40 max token I'm given then I'm just setting up a variable called QHN and it is going to like initialize with the help of this LLM chain LLM will be LLM okay right then template will be this template okay right done then we'll be going to setting up a variable called question which is going to be come from this text area ask your question right the next thing uh, I want to actually display a button but button will be only available if question is actually not blank when a button is actually initialized and that is a submit button and if the submit button is pressed then what is actually going to happen inside this uh, like variable we'll be going to do a similarity search based on the question which is comes from this like user input and we'll be going to get the five relevant documents right so once you get the five relevant documents I'm just going to create a, a blank string okay and after that i'm just going to append all this document together means all this string together yeah both the same like documents are getting appended inside this string variable right and once this is done i'll be just going to call this qhn and i'll be going to invoke this using this invoke function and there the input will be user question and context will be this context that string context whatever we just created and this is going to give me some response and this response i'll be going to actually print here as well okay as a result and that will be also visible in the ui okay that's it done now just because i want to actually uh, like uh, finish this videos very quickly because most of you requested that if the similar type of coding is used in the video then there is no point of doing the no, no point of doing the code again and again rather than i just uh, explain you guys the code because you guys are watching my series for the last uh, like two three months so you already uh, get some sort of like familiar about this sort of coding right so now what we'll do we'll be just going to execute this function uh, this code so it should be stream late right run and rag rag.py right our rag is loaded right right now we'll be going to ask question for asking question i already have a model question how to use ipson smart panel mobile app okay let's ask this question okay okay let's ask this question and wait here it will be printed here hopefully okay so it is saying sorry answer not known okay so i ask a very uh, okay so how to use ipson smart panel mobile app it is saying sorry answer not known this is very very strange okay so um, why this is so maybe um, just hold on context if no information found in the context just reply sorry answer not known okay i am thinking that i should print this context as well here because this is also useful okay 
let's ask this question again okay sometime we have to do okay let's do yes i got the context and everything here but it is still saying context not known okay so basically mm, just hold on so i think okay fine so let's write down so i think last line was not required okay so now it will be going to give him so yeah last line was not required okay let's see yep yeah. so now it is giving me the correct answer okay now what we'll do now we'll be going to ask the second question so basically uh, okay so let's ask the second question how to use if some remote print let's say okay okay so hopefully it will print yes so second question is also getting printed so basically suppose you are you are an end user and you are looking for uh, uh, looking for some sort of help from the help desk so rather than logging a ticket or calling a help desk and again company has to invest a lot of money to train the help desk employee or maybe company has to actually put some effort as well to arrange the training for the company Lo lots of time lots of efforts are involved right and this is and maintaining an employee is actually going to an onboard uh, like ongoing cost so here actually with the help of one time investment for building this sort of ai driven rag you you can actually imagine like uh, the company is actually going to save a lot of money right because everything is actually happening on a fly and nobody is actually uh, as a human uh, like perspective or as a manual intervention uh, it is completely uh, like um, uh, like uh, human uh, like uh, operation free right no uh, no human is actually going to interact with this thing like uh, you as a person going to ask something and you will immediately get an answer if you don't get an answer probably there should be some intelligent system you can actually give a feedback just like chat gpt right but here i haven't actually done that the full fledged application that where user will actually have an option to give a feedback right so next question is actually let's go i want to connect so it is a little bit tricky question so let's see whether it is able to do it or not okay i want to connect to a new wifi router help me so let's see what is actually happening here okay yep so it is giving me the correct answer okay now how to print photos let's ask this question okay okay so all done so last let's ask this fun question i want to play football how to do this let's ask this question and see okay 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 so it is giving me something but i don't know what it is giving okay it seems like you are looking for information related to but i specifically uh, providing the support for, if you have any question yeah see it is giving the correct answer okay and it is giving me the expected thing right obviously whatever we are trying to achieve we actually achieved okay 
okay so okay 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 so in this way you can actually develop any sort of like help desk agent with the help of rag so if you have multiple documents or multiple user manual and you can actually make this thing like more realistic okay there are a lot of like llm or rag evolution techniques are available with the help of those techniques you can uh, like predict more mature or more accurate answer but our ultimate objective is actually not to evaluate the uh, like um, retrieval uh, information or the retrieval uh, chain or the retrieval pipeline or the rack pipeline our ultimate objective here is actually to get a like feelings like how how this system can be developed or we are trying to develop an intuition that uh, this is also uh, and way where actually you can uh, develop something to make some uh, like real value for your company right because this sort of things are uh, some real life use case right because every company has a help desk and every company is paying a lot of money to that help desk engineer right and before hiring the help desk engineer company has to actually perform a uh, lot of like uh, internal activities right hiring process interview process training process so companies are actually paying a lot of money putting a lot of effort uh, building this sort of like uh, skill set within their organization now with the help of ai and with the help of this sort of tool everything will be eliminated within within a couple of weeks development time right so yeah whatever i'm showing you guys maybe it is not going to uh, uh, make uh, going to have, like make a lot of people happy like mostly the service engineer service desk engineer like help desk people will not be happy with my video but again this is how it is so i'm just uh, providing the actual uh, things here right okay so with that note i'll be just going to conclude the video over here we'll upload more interesting videos along with some use case in the upcoming series or upcoming tutorial but before i conclude guys please try to subscribe to my channel hit the like button share our videos with your family and friend and whenever possible uh, try to uh, put some comment and let me know what are the things you find valuable and what are the things you uh, feel can be done in a better way in the upcoming video so i'll try to improve our quality as well okay so that's it for today we'll see you in the next video till then take care goodbye have a nice day and happy learning